Hello students, this lecture will provide you with an introduction to mechanical energy. Our objectives are to be able to describe how the law of conservation of energy applies specifically to mechanical energy. We've already talked about the law of conservation of energy and now we're going to zoom in and see what uh, that means for physical objects. Uh, draw energy pie charts to show the breakdown of mechanical energy for various situations and we're going to see what these energy pie charts are and see how they can be a useful tool uh, to see what kinds of mechanical energy are in an object at any given time. So let's take a look at a statement of conservation of mechanical energy. Uh, in a previous lecture we talked about uh, conservation of energy in general and we said that the total amount of energy in the universe is constant as far as we know and that energy cannot be created or destroyed. You can only convert energy from one form into another or you can transfer energy from one object to another. And if we zoom in specifically on mechanical energy which is the energy of physical objects we'll see that within mechanical energy uh, the conservation of energy is true as well. So we can make this statement, we can say the total mechanical energy of an object remains constant unless mechanical energy is transferred out to another object or mechanical energy is transferred in from another object. And both of these cases, it, the transfer of mechanical energy, both of these are called work or mechanical work. And we're, we're actually going to talk about mechanical work in a separate lecture. So we don't need to worry about the details of how this happens just yet. But um, the, the basic statement is that I, I have uh, mechanical energy in an object and it can't change. The total amount can't change um, unless I, I transfer some of it in or out. Whatever that object has, it has it. So there are some things that we can do. So within an object, we can convert between different kinds of mechanical energy. Uh, remember that there are three different kinds of mechanical energy. One form is kinetic energy, the, the energy of speed. Uh, another form of mechanical energy is gravitational potential energy, which is the energy of height. And the other one we talked about in a previous lecture is elastic potential energy, which is the energy of stretching, squeezing, tension, compression, or deformation, some, some sort of um, stretching or, or um, bending of an object and um, we can trade those back and forth within an object. For example, if we wanted to trade height for speed, this would be something like an object dropping down a hill. So I can draw my little hill here. There is a hill and I have a boulder or rock or car or roller coaster or some physical object is going down a hill. And the statement that I'm making is that it had some gravitational potential energy at the top of the hill as it rolls down the hill. This gravitational potential energy is getting less because we're getting less height. But we can't, we can't just get rid of mechanical energy. It has to stay there. We can't, we can't destroy energy. So, so we need to convert it into something else. It's converting into kinetic energy as we go down the hill. No energy is lost. It's just converted into another form. And in fact, that's why objects which are falling down in general have to speed up because that energy is getting converted into kinetic energy. We're trading height for speed. Another example would be going the other way. Objects can trade speed for height. And this might be uh, something like where we have a ramp. Give myself a little more room here. Where let's say I have a ramp going up and some object is going up the hill you know let's say I have a car and I'm cruising along and uh, I, I take my foot off the gas so I'm just coasting and I go up a hill well eventually my car is gonna slow down and stop um, because some of my energy is now going into height into gravitational potential energy I have to take that energy from somewhere. I can't just create this gravitational potential energy and give myself height for free. Um, there's no such thing as free energy. I have to get it from somewhere. In this case, I got it from my speed. I traded speed for height, which meant that I converted kinetic energy into gravitational potential energy. This is very similar to what we talked about before 
uh, in terms of conservation of energy in general. We're just zooming in on, on mechanical energy in particular. So let's see an equation that can help us think about this quantitatively. Quantitatively means with numbers. So I'm going to make a statement that the total mechanical energy, which I'm showing here as Me, is equal to the sum of the gravitational potential energy, the kinetic energy, and the elastic potential energy in the object at any given time. And if we go back to our statement up here, the total mechanical energy of an object remains constant, then this number right here, Me, this total mechanical energy has to stay the same number. If all of these add up to 100, you know, I have 60 plus 20 plus another 20 over here. So I have 60 joules of GPE, 20 joules of kinetic energy, and 20 joules of elastic potential energy. That adds up to 100. I can trade between these, but the total amount has to always remain constant. I always need to have 100 over here in this example. I could give 20 joules of GP over to KE, and then I would have 40 joules of GP left, but now I'd have 40 joules uh, over here in kinetic energy, and my EP would remain unchanged. But the total is going to stay the same. We'll see some examples of this. Before I get to those examples, I want to give us a tool that is going to be helpful in helping us visualize how much mechanical energy is in an object at any given time and in what forms GPE, KE, or EPE that energy is in. And we're going to call this an energy pie chart. Uh, energy pie charts help us visualize the relative ratios of different forms of mechanical energy in an object. And we've We've kind of seen pie charts. We have some sort of total area of the pie. Let me draw that pie chart right here. So here is here's my pie, and I've got this total area of the pie, and that's going to represent all of the mechanical energy that we have in an object at, at some point in time. And what I can do with this pie is slice it into pieces. So let me make a delicious slice of pie right here and so I can say this whole pie is my mechanical energy at, at one point in time and some piece of it let's say right here this is uh, the kinetic energy of an object this small slice and over here this big slice is going to be the gravitational potential energy of an object so immediately I sort of have this visual image or, or, a, or a drawing that tells me something about this object. I can say that right now at this point in time, wherever I drew this energy pie chart for, the object has most of its most of its energy contained in gravitational potential energy, so it probably still has a lot of height uh, relative to where it was, and some of that energy is in the form of kinetic energy, so it is moving. Um, some of its total energy is, is stored in motion, but most of its uh, energy is currently stored in height. That's what this pie chart uh, would tell me. In this particular object that I've drawn an energy pie chart for, there's no EP, there's no elastic potential energy, uh, and that's fine. It, it just depends on what that object is doing at the time. Um, but there's no particular reason that you can't have all three of these forms of energy on the pie chart at the same time. If the object does have some height, some motion, and some stretching or squeezing, it could have all three forms of mechanical energy going on at the same time. And this pie chart would show you the relative proportion of each of these that make up the object's total mechanical energy. So just for clarity, let me label this whole pie chart as my total total ME, my total mechanical energy, is that pi. Now, let's see an example of what this could look like for a pendulum. Now, we just did a lab on simple pendulums. We know that a pendulum is uh, any mass uh, called a bob hanging at the end of a string, and we uh, release it at some height and it swings all the way across over to here, and then it's going to swing back, 
and forth and back and forth in a repeating cycle. And we can measure things like the period, we can measure the mass of the bob, we can measure the length of the string, and, and see what effects those have on the pendulum's motion. Uh, but uh, in essence, it's very simple. It's just, it's just a mass that swings back and forth on the end of a string. Let's see what a energy pie chart is going to look like for each of these positions of the pendulum's motion. Let's zoom in right over here on situation one. And I'm saying this is where I release that pendulum from rest. From rest means that it's uh, not moving. So if I'm just holding the pendulum here and it's not moving at all, it has some height above, above the ground, above, um, you know, above my lowest point. So because it has height uh, and no motion, 100% of its energy is in the form of GPE, in the form of gravitational potential energy. All of my pi, the whole area of the pi, is taken up by GPE. Now when we go to point two on this pendulum, let me actually just make a copy of my pie chart so you can show that between point one and point two, we haven't gotten rid of any total mechanical energy. The total size of my pie is exactly the same. So so it has the same amount of mechanical energy. It hasn't gone anywhere. But what has happened is that the relative proportion of GPE and KE within the mechanical energy of this object has changed. And you can see that it's, it's fallen most of the way down to the bottom. So it's lost most of its mechanical energy at this point. Let me show a... Um, a dotted line here. If this is the bottom, there's the bottom, like that, I've lost this much height. I've, I started here and now it's dropped to here. So we've lost over half of our height by the time we get from 1 to 2. That means over half of my GPE has been lost. Let's say, let's say three quarters. Um, I, I don't know what the exact numbers are because we haven't put any numbers on this particular example, but let's say qualitatively it looks like um, most of my GPE is gone because I've lost most of my height. So I only have that much GPE left. Now the total amount of mechanical energy has to stay the same because mechanical energy is conserved. It can't go anywhere. It can't just make it disappear. So all of this area of the pi is no longer GP. It is now Ke. It got converted to kinetic energy. Most of this pendulum's energy is currently in the form of motion. Now the point at the very bottom is a very interesting place. Let me bring another energy pi right here. I'm going to draw an energy pi. And it's the same size as the previous energy pies because the same amount of total mechanical energy is still in the object. I cannot get rid of that energy. But at this point, we've lost all of our height. So no portion of this pi can be in the form of GPE. All of it, all of it must be in the form of kinetic energy. At this point, at the very bottom of the swing, 100% uh, of the pendulum's energy is in the form of motion, which means that as a consequence, this point, point three, is actually where the pendulum is moving the fastest. It has to be, because this is where most of its energy, in fact all of it, is in the form of kinetic energy, the, mo the energy of motion. So I'm slowest, in fact, there's a brief moment when these pendulums get to their highest point where they instant in time they just stop and then they turn around and go the other direction there's no motion at this instant in time they're briefly stopped and then they speed up they're going the fastest right here and they slow down again as they go back up briefly stop for just the barest of instance and then they go back down again once again going fastest always here at the bottom uh, because all of its energy is in the form of ke now you can see where this is going. If I draw another energy pi here for point four, 
then I've, I've climbed back up a little bit. So some of my energy is now back in the energy of, of height, which is GPE. I've, I've regained some, um, some GPE, some height. So uh, we'll say, again, a quarter of my energy, roughly, is in GPE. And to get that GPE, it had to come from somewhere, I had to convert kinetic energy into gravitational potential energy because the total amount has to stay the same. I couldn't get any more. So that means if I increased my amount of GP, I must have reduced the amount of kinetic energy that I have. And you can imagine that when we get right back up here to the same point, the same height as I released it from, I finally have all of my energy back in the form of gravitational potential energy. In fact, the consequence of that is that this pendulum can never swing any higher than where I released it from. Th these two heights have to always be uh, uh, the same, or at least no higher, because if I started off with this amount of energy, all the energy I have to spend is in height, so I can't get any more height. There's no more energy left to spend. This is as high as I can go. When I get all the way to the other side, then this is as high as I can go. Uh, assuming I hung on to all my energy, that's all I've got to spend on height. Okay, now let's see if you can do a new example. Here I have a diagram of a roller coaster. It's starting from rest up here at point A. It goes down this hill, uh, down to point D here at the bottom of the hill, just rolls down, and then it um, goes back up another hill up to point G. I want you to realize here, take take notice, that point G is lower than point A. Okay? Uh, see if you can draw the energy pies for points A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And pay attention to these relative heights. Pause the video and see how you do. Okay, let's see how you did. So, key points. Um, I know that my highest point in the whole diagram is A. So this is going to be where I have the most amount of GPE. I have the most height at A. Um, I, it also says that I start from rest. From rest means that I'm not moving. I, I don't have any speed or velocity. So I also know that at point A, uh, I have no kinetic energy. I can't have any kinetic energy because I'm not moving. Um, this point right here, D, this is where I have zero height. So by the time I get down to D, I better have gotten rid of all of my GPE, all of my gravitational potential energy. So let's see what this ends up looking like. For point A, For point A, I have uh, a lot of height and no motion. So actually, 100% of my energy pi should be in the form of GPE. There's nothing else. All my mechanical energy is in the form of gravitational potential energy. Now, as I drop, some of that gravitational potential energy uh, not much, looks like just a little bit of it, has turned into kinetic energy uh, by the time I get to point B. So let's say point B. And remember, I have the exact same amount of total mechanical energy, so I'm going to draw my pi the same size, except what is different in this case is that some of this GP has turned into kinetic energy. Okay, let's say um, about uh, let's say about a quarter has turned into kinetic energy. So I'm going to label this Ke right there. This part of my energy pie chart is Ke, and most of my energy is still in the form of GPE. 
because I still have a lot of height. Okay, now as I drop, I've dropped more than halfway down by the time I get to C. So when I draw my energy pie chart for C, here's point C, and let me get the same size energy pie chart. So we're talking about this point right here. I've dropped more than halfway down. So that means that more than half of my energy is, is no longer in gravitational potential energy. I've 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 lost um, I've lost some of it. So let's say this much over here is in kinetic energy. Most of my energy is now in kinetic energy because I've lost most of my height. So I can't have a lot of uh, GPE, or at least I can't have any more GPE than I have KE. So I'm going to label this part the GPE. Let's put a little arrow uh, so I know what I'm talking about there. That's point C. Let's take a look at point D. Point D. I'm all the way at the bottom of the hill, so I shouldn't have any GPE left at all. Uh, so where did my energy go? It has to remain in my object. Oops, let me get the same size. Uh -oh. Let me get the same size energy pi. There it is. Okay, point D. I can't have any GPE left because I'm at the bottom of the hill. I have zero height. So 100% of my energy pi is in the form of kinetic energy. So once again, uh, for this example, this is where I'm going the fastest. Um, an object isn't always going fastest at the very bottom. Just in the case where we have conserved mechanical energy, where I start off at rest from some height up here and we trade that height for speed, all of this height has been traded to speed by the time we get to the bottom of the hill over here. So for this case, point D is where I'm going the fastest. Now, let's see what happens at point E. Point E. And here's my energy pi, same total area because the total amount of mechanical energy is the same, GP plus KE. Um, but now I've, I've gone back up a little bit. I've gained some height again. Notice that I don't have as much height as I did at point C, right? Point E is lower than point C. If I draw a line here from the middle of point E over, you can clearly see that E is lower than C. So there's no way that point E, the object at point E, can have as much gravitational potential energy as it did when it was at point C. I have to be something less than this share of the pi. So let me draw this pi with something less than point C for the GP. Okay, and his little arrow so I know that this portion of the pi is my gravitational potential energy. The rest of the pi, of course, is kinetic energy. So it looks like I'm still moving pretty fast, uh, faster than I was moving at point C. You can see because I have more of my energy in, in the form of kinetic energy, um, but certainly not as fast as I was going at point D because some of that kinetic energy has been used to, to go into height. I've converted some of this kinetic energy into gravitational potential energy. At point F, point F, here's my energy pie chart. Same area because the same total mechanical energy. But now point F, let's see, where am I relative again to point C? I, ha I have gained more height than at point C, so I must have more GPE than at point C. So why don't I draw this uh, energy pie chart, let's just say straight down the middle, it's about halfway. I'm going to make that half and half. And we'll say that this side, half of my energy, oops, I guess I should be consistent. This side, half my energy is in Ke, and over here, half my energy, half my mechanical energy, is in GPE. Okay, there we go. And I have one point left, point G. 
point G, which again, let's look at how high it is relative to these other points. It, even though it's gone back up a hill, it is still lower than my original point. Point G, the object has less height than it did have at point A. So I cannot have as much GPE as I did at point A. Let's see what the consequence of that is. Here is point G. I'm going to bring in my energy pie chart. Same total size, same total area because I have the same total mechanical energy. If I can't have as much GPE as point A, but I certainly have more GPE than at point B, you see I've got to fall somewhere between these two, then I need to have an amount of GPE that is something between point A and point B. So let's give myself a slice that looks like this. Very narrow slice. And this part right here, this tiny little slice, is going to be what I have in KE. And this big gigantic slice over here, most of the pi, is in GPE. So what does this physically mean? Let's look at what this pie chart physically means. It means that almost, almost all of the object's energy is in the form of GPE height, but it still has some motion because there's this thin little slice of KE. The object is still moving at point G. Okay, here are your energy pie charts for this particular example. Let's go back to our objectives for this lesson. You should be able to describe how the law of conservation of energy applies specifically to mechanical energy, and you should be able to draw energy pie charts to show the breakdown of mechanical energy for various situations.